Hi, I'm John Smatlock with the Orange Empire Railway Museum, and this is Behind the Rails. Today we're looking at car 3001 from the Los Angeles Railway. 3001 is a streamlined PCC type streetcar. Los Angeles Railway had 165 of these cars. They were introduced in 1937. They represented a big break from the streetcar designs of the past, and the citizens of Los Angeles took quite a liking to them. This particular car was introduced in 1937 by then mayor of the city and Shirley Temple. None other than Shirley Temple christened this car in a ceremony in front of City Hall in 1937. The car spent most of its life on the Pico Boulevard P line in Los Angeles and lasted until the end of streetcar service in 1963. It came to the museum in 1963, still painted in its final MTA green colors from Los Angeles, and we've restored it to its 1937 as-built appearance. It wore this paint scheme from about 1937 into the 1940s when the Los Angeles Transit Lines repainted it into a different paint scheme. Come on inside, let's take a look at how a PCC car operates. One of the first differences about the PCC car was the operator had a comfortable seat in which to sit. In the older street cars, as you'll see in some of our other clips, the operator stood most of the day or sat on a short wooden stool. In the PCC car, he was equipped with his own space, a nice comfortable chair that was adjustable, had mirrors to look back into the inside of the car, and the way the car operates is instead of with hand controls like in our older street cars, the PCC is operated with foot controls just like your automobile. The foot pedals from left to right are the dead man, the brake, and the accelerator pedal. Again, very similar to your automobile. The difference here is the dead man pedal. And the dead man pedal is there to ensure that the operator is actually at the controls while the streetcar is moving. Uh, if I were to lift up if on the dead man pedal, as long as I have my foot on the brake, that's no problem. If I were to lift up on the dead man pedal uh, with the car in gear, as it were, and this, this uh, device I'm inserting into the uh, stand on the floor is the reverser. And basically, this is our forward and reverse. It's got three positions. Where you put the handle in, that's reverse. Moving it to the middle, that makes the car go forward. And all the way to the front, that's an emergency position, which we won't demonstrate now, that for emergency braking. So if getting back to the way the dead man works, if I were to uh, keep my foot on the brake and let go, it's no problem. If I were to have my foot off the brake and let go of the dead man, it, it drops the magnetic track brakes and brings the car to a quick halt. So it's an emergency braking uh, built in in case the operator should become incapacitated. You'll notice a row of switches here in front. This allows us to open and close the front doors. Allows us to open and close the rear doors back there. And we have the gong right here. Instead of having to reach up and pull a string, it's right there on the, we call this the gang switch. The gauge cluster up on the dash of the streetcar has a couple of simple controls. It's got an air pressure gauge that tells me that the air pressure is uh, correct in the main reservoir. It's also got a voltmeter that tells me the battery voltage is okay. And it's got the green light here that tells me that the rear doors are closed and that I'm okay to run the car. In addition to being able to operate the car from the front end, the PCC car is equipped with a set of backup controls to allow moves in and out of the car barn. And it, they're cleverly hidden behind the back passenger seat here. You open this compartment here. We take out the gong pedal. Put the gong pedal on the floor. That gives us a little warning device. Now we take the same reverser handle that we used at the front end of the car. And we place it in the backup controller. The backup controller is just a simplified version of the main controls, or actually we should say the backup controller operates the same controls, but it just does it in a simplified fashion. It's got a couple of positions. It's got an emergency braking position there, which will drop the track brakes. And then it's got a power position that allows us to move the car forward, or backwards, I should say. And then as we uh, move the car back, we hold on to the trolley rope just to feel in case the trolley pole might snag in the overhead wire, we'd at least know about it and be able to stop the car. 
and it can coast or we can bring it to a stop. One of the other things you'll notice that's different about the PCC car is it's got nice comfortable seats for the passengers. The wooden cars, the wooden seats that we saw in some of our other cars. Uh, I think the passengers really appreciated the new modern seating when they first saw it in 1937 inside the PCC car. As we restored the car and returned it to its original appearance, we've done a couple of things like added these reproduction car cards that are the advertisements. Just like in today's transit vehicles, you've got lots of advertising. It was no different back then. It was a source of revenue for the agency operating the car. The back doors of the car are designed for the passengers to be able to get on and off themselves through the use of a treadle. Uh, a lot of transit buses today have a similar configuration. You step on the treadle and the door opens automatically and you can get out. It's also got a sensitive edge. So if you notice the door will try to close on my arm, but as soon as it hits the sensitive edge, it stops and opens back up again. We have also, uh, the cars also have a stop buzzer. The passengers can request to uh, their next stop, just like on the bus today. It's got this neat Art Deco lighting and lots of places uh, for people to hang on. And all the stanchions are uh, stainless steel. Thanks for joining us today here at the Orange Empire Railway Museum and Behind the Rails. Check back on the website again soon for another episode and another interesting car to take a look at. Don't forget also our website's got plenty of information about special events at the museum, how to become a member, and more importantly, how to become a volunteer and help us to maintain cars like the 3001. We'll look forward to seeing you again at Behind the Rails. I'm John Smetlick. <laughs>